Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Daly and I'm an actress, singer, performer and general creative person um, from Middlesbrough in the northeast of England. Um, I've been working in theatre now for a good... Ooh, since about 2013, so maybe like eight years professionally, but I studied at Arts Ed before that in West London. Uh, I studied my degree in musical theatre there. Um, and yeah, had an amazing three years there before launching into the industry at full speed. Um, I've worked in shows in London. I worked in, uh, I did Mamma Mia in the West End for a year straight out of college. And then from then on, I've predominantly been touring as an actor. Um, I've travelled all over the world uh, touring with um, very fantastic musical productions such as Les Mis and Grease and Evita most recently. Um, so I thought today I'd tell you a little bit about my experiences as an actor on tour. So one of my first experiences of touring was actually on a UK island tour, uh, my second job out of college, uh, which was The Sound of Music, which was amazing because it's a musical that I grew up absolutely loving and watching constantly on the TV. Um, so yeah, I got the part of Baroness Elberfeld, very respectable, and uh, cover Maria, understudy Maria, um, which was amazing. Um, and when I signed up uh, to do the job, I knew that I was going to um, perform as Maria in two different venues on the UK tour. So I knew that I already had um, a pre-contractual week on as Maria in Sheffield, which was amazing because uh, it's kind of north, so quite close, so my family could come down and see me. And then I had two weeks in walking on as Maria, um, which was amazing because it was close to London, so my friends could come and see me. Um, so yeah, that was really cool to be able to sign up to the job knowing that I was going to get on to perform as Maria, um, which doesn't always happen as an understudy because we are employed to uh, cover the leading actor if the leading actor gets sick or is unavailable for any reason. Um, so yeah, it's not always a guaranteed thing as some leading actors are very, very healthy, <laughs> um, which is a good thing, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, I got the job, booked the job, and uh, before the job started, we received a tour schedule which uh, told us which cities we'd be travelling to in the UK and uh, the dates for those cities. So the first thing that you would need to do in those situations is book your dicks. Now there are different Facebook pages and um, websites that are quite helpful for that. There's a Theatre Digs Booker site that uh, that helps you with finding accommodation in various cities. Um, the company, as an actor, we are entitled to a subsistence fee. I don't know why I keep doing this, <laughs> but a subsistence fee, um, which is a fee that will help with accommodation costs. So you get um, a specific number uh, of uh, money to put towards the accommodation. Um, and you get a touring allowance, which covers your travel from city to, to city. Um, so yeah, that's good that we get a bit of help in that way to help us book our travel and our accommodation. Um, it can be quite tricky if you're in a very big cast to find good digs. So you have to get on it as early as possible. Uh, yeah, so that is one of the main things that you have to consider first when you book a tour. Um, finding your place to sleep that's good and nice. <laughs> um, and I always think that booking good digs is quite important for your brain because you want to be able to go home to your accommodation after a heavy week of shows or during a very busy week of shows and you want to be able to know that you feel comfortable in your surroundings and that you can get a good night's sleep because sleep is the best medicine. Um, so yeah, it's all about uh, finding a space that is is suitable. So you might not want to try and save money um, and pay more money to get um, better digs for you. Um, or you could want to save money and uh, 
and book a cheaper place. Um, but yeah, I personally like to book uh, accommodation that that will make me happy so I can go home and have a restful night. Uh, so yeah, that is booking digs. The next thing that I had to decide when I was uh, thinking about going on tour was how was I going to travel from place to place? Now, this uh, <laughs> this may seem like a bit of a, well, get the train. Yeah, it's an obvious choice, but uh, there are lots of things to consider um, with regards to luggage and uh, what is going to be the most stress-free way to travel. So for me personally, I like to drive. So I like to just throw all of my stuff in the car and get on the road and I'm in control of my own travel. Um, I like to be in my car and I like to play my music and my podcasts and stop off for a coffee whenever I like and uh, get there uh, in good time and not have to rely on trains and stuff like that. Um, for people who don't drive, people do get the train uh, to places and uh, yeah, that is just basically it. Um, plane actually sometimes you get the plane to Ireland when you go to Ireland so I don't drive when I go to Ireland um we've been to Belfast before we went to Belfast with the sound of music so um we flew over to Belfast and then we actually were in Dublin straight after Belfast so we got the train from Belfast to Dublin uh so Ireland was a car free zone but I usually tend to get in the car and drive and sometimes I'll uh, have a spare seat in the car so I'll be like come in come and join come and sit in the car with me um, and split the petrol costs which is really really good and really efficient um, so yeah I like driving I always have my best creative ideas when I'm driving I have like little epiphanies and I have to stop and write them down um, it's my it's my thinking time in the car and I get to catch up on podcasts as I say, and audiobooks and music, um, which always makes me really happy. Now, at the end of each show week in a venue, you then get a day off and then there's a travel day to get to the next venue. That's usually the case. Um, and on those travel days, um, you have to travel to the next city um, and you need to get there in time for what is usually um, a sound check tech situation. So on our days off, um, after the show closes in a venue, the technical staff will come in and they'll do what is called a get out. So they'll, they'll take down all of the set, they'll take down all of the lighting, all of the sound equipment, everything like that. They'll pack everything into a truck and then they drive onto the next venue and they go straight into what is called a get in situation. So then they set up in the new theatre. Um, now we arrive just in time for a sound check and a tech situation um, to tech in the show in the new space if you like, um, just to make sure we're familiar with the building. You do a little walk around and see what's different for you backstage, what might be similar, um, whether uh, the backstage area of a theatre affects quick changes and stuff like that, entrances, exits. And uh, then we sound check, sing through the show, make sure all the mics are okay, the levels are okay, um, making sure we can hear ourselves or hear the band um, as much as we need to um yeah that is what is usually happens on the first day in a new venue and then you have your little tea break and then you go away and you prepare for the first show in the new venue which is all very very exciting Now, what I love about traveling to um, different cities is I've been able to see the full country and experience all of like these really cool hangouts in different cities. Um, I have like a favorite coffee shop, at least in every single city. I really like to I get there and I'm like, I must scope out the good coffee. <laughs> and then I tend to go back there whenever I revisit the city. Um, so yeah, some of my favorite food has been on tour. Um, I remember off the top of my head, I can think of like having this specific portion of chicken wings in Belfast. And I'm yet to go back to Belfast to have them. Um, <laughs> 
but I often think about them. Um, and you kind of discover new places that you've not uh, visited before. As I say, like there were some cities that I'd never been to before and I was able to kind of live there for a week or, or two weeks, which is really cool. Um, places like Bristol um, I'd never been to before and Bristol is now one of my favourite cities ever. I love going back to Bristol. Um, and if there's ever um, a, like a concert um, by an artist that I'm a fan of and I see that they're touring to Bristol, I take it as an opportunity to go back to Bristol and just have a have a little jolly there. Um, and yeah, I'd never been there before um, I went on tour. So it's really, really cool to discover new places. Um, I also discovered Boston Tea Party when I was um, on tour, um, <laughs> which they have a few branches in different cities further down south um, and they do really nice scones. So yeah, I you've got to find the joy <laughs> in the downtime, I think. That's one of the main things I like to do. I like to really experience the city as much as I can um, because then that takes away from feeling homesick and not having your home comforts. Um, I think if you're trying to find the joy and if you if you have your curiosity and you're trying to explore, I think um, that's what makes it more exciting. Um, so, yeah, I love doing that. I've loved going to all the different cities and experiencing what each city has to offer culturally and food wise, most <laughs> most definitely food wise. Um, yeah. And I've made lots of new friends in these places as well. I've spoken to lots of different people and um, it's just really cool to see how each city reacts to theatre too. And more on that later. I'm going to I'm going to touch on that later about theatre being meaning different things for different uh, places um, all around the world. Um, so, yeah, that's really, really cool. It's a really cool part of touring, getting to. Um, meet new people and find new places. So to sum up on the UK touring front, um, let me give you a quick rundown. So you get the job, you book the job, woohoo, party party. Um, you get your digs through and have to find digs. You get the schedule through, sorry, and have to find digs uh, for the UK tour. UK island tour. Um, you arrange how you're going to travel. So if you can drive but you don't have a car because you're in London, you find a little cheap runaround car like I did <laughs> um, and get insured on that bad boy and uh, hit the road. Or you book your train tickets. And the further in advance you book tickets, I think it's cheaper. So uh, yeah, you get on that. You book up your travel. Um, after that, you go to your first city and you do your sound check and you adapt to the new space that you're in and um uh and adapt to any changes that might come with the venue how it affects your your show and how it affects um your traffic within the show backstage traffic which is just as important as on stage traffic um costume changes scene changes everything like that um you adapt accordingly which i think is what um touring is great for it's it gives you the opportunity to learn how to adapt to new scenarios and circumstances um so you have no choice but to adapt to your surroundings and make the best out of those surroundings um and similarly adapting to a new city and what each city has to offer and how to get around a new city where the where the coffee is as we've mentioned <laughs> And uh, yeah, like what that city has to offer that's unique. Um, meet the people, meet the new people, um, experience how they react to the show um, and how they connect to the show, which is amazing. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything. That's a roundup of UK touring so far. Now, a completely different uh, tour experience that I've uh, had the enormous um, privilege to have as an actor, which doesn't come around as often as like UK tour and stuff, is uh, the international tour. Um, so uh, there are various international tours. Um, there are European tours, um, 
which are amazing. You get to travel around Europe in di different cities. I know a lot of people have worked in Germany and Switzerland and places like that, which is really cool. Um, but on the flip, there is also the international tour of like Asia, um, which is the tour that I embarked on um, in 2016. Um, so I just, I think I just finished The Sound of Music actually. Um, and I had a couple of months gap uh, in between jobs as working, jobbing actors do. Um, so I had to fill that little blank. But then I got the job of uh, Factory Girl, Cover Fontaine on the Les Mis International Tour, um, which took me to the Philippines initially. Um, so the Philippines is like way on the other side of the world. Um, kind of near Indonesia, uh, Malaysia, um, Japan, that area, within the middle of that, I think it is, um, just north of Australia. Um, so yeah, I got to fly all the way over there and we rehearsed in the capital of the Philippines, which is Manila. Um, Manila, I love the, I love the name. Uh, and I met there um, the other half of my cast. So there was, it was a half British cast and then it was a half Australian cast, which again is a very, very unique thing to happen. I don't, I'd not heard of that happening in recent years since I'd graduated from college. Um, so I made a whole new circle of friends from the other side of the world, which was insane. Um, we met in Manila um, and we rehearsed there for a month. And what was interesting about um, working with a half British, half Australian cast is we have very different ways of working. Um, I think because we come from very different industries within the theatre industry. Um, so Australia is a huge country and has has a has a theatre industry, but it's much smaller than, um, in my opinion, much smaller than the American theatre industry or the, the British theatre industry. Um, because they they do Australian tours, so they tend to tour the main cities in Australia, which are like Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, um, big cities like that. Whereas within uh, the UK, we have obviously the West End, which is a massive theatre circuit. And then on top of that, we have all of the regional theatres um, that house the the touring productions and also regional theatres like Curve, which is a massive producing house. Um, so yeah, it's a much smaller industry in Australia, but there are still a lot of performers. So they work very, very hard. Um, they've got excellent work ethic and us Brits sometimes are quite laid back and we like a little laugh. Um, so we kind of like balanced each other out um, in that way I found. Um, and because of that, we had such an incredible kind of working relationship. Um, the show was always very, the performances were, were always very committed. And um, still, we managed to have a really good time and we managed to have a really good laugh. Um, so that's always fascinated me. It was a completely unique experience, as I say. Um, and I learned a lot from my Australian counterparts. I really did. Um, I learned when to to take things seriously and when to lighten up um, situations, which is important with a show like Les Mis, <laughs> because it's it's in the name, isn't it? Les Miserables. Um, so yeah, we met in Manila. We rehearsed for a month uh, in Manila in this foreign country, uh, which was really, really exciting. Um, we stayed in a hotel in the Philippines, which is part of a contract for international touring. You have to be put up in um, a hotel accommodation, um, which was very new to me. So it's all about room service and finding finding the, uh, the options that you like within um, this whole new world, uh, food-wise, cuisine-wise. I think that was such a massive thing about... Um, about adapting to the city. I'm a food person, as I've mentioned, and um, obviously you you have your home comforts and what you deem as your balanced, healthy diet. Now, when you move into a different country and there aren't those options, um, there aren't your, um, your healthy security blanket options, you have to be able to adapt and find other things that work for you 
that will continue to fuel your brain and your body accordingly. And I think that's really important um, when looking after yourself, when doing a show in a foreign country, um, is seeking out those foods that are still healthy. Um, but uh, it's all very, it's all very new and exciting. Um, and I do tend to get carried away when it comes to hotel room service. Um, my nickname when we were in the Philippines was actually Diamond Burger Daily because I used to love the the hotel burger on room service. <laughs> but anyway, but besides that point, we we stayed in a hotel when we rehearsed and when we did the show and then we opened the show at the Soler Theatre in Manila, which is a massive theatre, brand new theatre. Um, and it was just incredible. It was the first time that Les Mis had been to the Philippines. Um, we had a lot of publicity because of that. And also we um, we had the privilege of having um, a Filipino actress in our cast, uh, Rachel Angor, who is fantastic. Um, she played Fontaine um, and I was her understudy. Um, and Rachel Angor is the equivalent of like Beyonce in the Philippines. Like she is so brilliant and they love her work there. Um, so that was quite a big pressure, uh, quite big. Oh, my dog's having a little itchy itchy if you can hear him. Um, quite big shoes to fill uh, with regards to understudy and Fontaine. Um, yeah, so we had quite a lot of publicity and it was a very exciting experience to be part of that. Um, so yeah, we were there for two months and then we had a month off um and i did some traveling in that time because if i'm over that side of the world why not so i i went to japan with my time off and i got to experience japan a place that i've always wanted to go to and i thought i thought if i'm over that side of the world i might as well take advantage of that um so yeah i did a little bit of traveling in between and then we moved on to singapore and we ran the show in Singapore for two months. And similarly to Manila, we stayed in a hotel in Singapore. It was another brand new city to explore. Um, and we did, we had a great time because we lived there for like two months. We were, we were there and we felt like we were residents there for quite a bit of time. So if you didn't experience the country, it's like, what are you doing? Um, so we found the good coffee. We went to uh, the beach resorts. We went to Universal Studios on our days off. We did all of these exciting things in Singapore and we really uh, experienced it as much as we could. And during that time, my mum and my nana flew out to Singapore and uh, came to see the show, which was amazing. Um, I ended up having, uh, I got on as Fontaine. I went to play Fontaine and my mum and my nana were able to see that, which was really, really special um, because it was a part that I played when I was a kid at youth theatre. Uh, so that was a really, really special experience as well. And after that, we had a couple of months off. Um, so straight after Singapore, we have family in Australia. So me, my mum and my nana flew to Australia and went to visit our family in Australia, which is really, really cool. And yeah, to be able to do that from, from going from this amazing work, it didn't feel like work at all. It just felt like a big holiday. Um, and I just got to do um, my job, which is what I love to do alongside it. Um, so yeah, we got to do that because of this job, uh, which was fantastic. So I got to see my family in Australia, flew home, had a bit of time off, and then we went to Dubai, which again is a very, very different place. Um, very, very different culture, different food, different people. Um, we opened the opera house there. They just built this brand new, beautiful opera house. Um, and we opened it, we were the first musical to play in the Dubai Opera House, um, which again was huge at the time in Dubai. Um, so uh, we had like Cameron McIntosh fly out, we had Claude Michel Schomburg fly out to experience it. Um, and yeah, just one experience. Again, we lived in an amazing hotel because they've got fantastic hotels in Dubai. And uh, we lived there for a month and it was just incredible. Um, so yeah, what just such a massive positive about international touring is being able to travel all over the world doing what I love 
and and seeing the world in the process um and having these experiences that i could only really dream of um essentially unless i saved up a lot of money to do a big world tour um a big holiday um i don't think i'd have been to those places if it wasn't for those jobs um well that job and uh, another job which i'm going to get onto in a bit It's incredible to travel to these places and experience what theatre means to different communities and cultures around the world um, and how universal theatre is as an art form. Um, everybody loves the theatre, everybody loves to connect via the theatre um, and I think it's been important to remember that actually it's been a very good thing to reminisce about when being stuck inside during the pandemic because I realised that's why I miss it because it, people connect to it um, and it brings people together and it unites people uh, no matter where you live or what walk of life you come from um, having it experienced people coming to the theatre and uniting as they do in the UK as they do elsewhere in the world has been amazing and uh, it feels very, very special and it only reaffirms why I love what I do so much. Um, it's a very, very special job to be able to do that and to bring people in a room together for a few hours just to forget whatever's going on in the world and to escape in a story, I think is really, really special. And I appreciate my work even more knowing that. I think one of the hardest things about touring internationally is obviously you're you're away from your family and your friends for such a long time. Um, so the longest I've been away from my family when touring internationally has been about four months. Um, and that that's quite a long time. That is quite a long time. Um, and it feels even longer when you're on the other side of the world and there's massive time difference. So when you're when you're about to do a show, your family are just getting out of bed on a morning <laughs> and it's really hard to find the time where you can connect to your family and friends over like FaceTime or over the internet or something like that. Um, it's hard, it's really, really tough, especially when you finish a show and you're very tired, but then that's peak time for your family to be awake. So you want to catch up with your family, but at the same time, you're really tired from the show and you want to go sleep. Um, and I feel like that's one of the most difficult things. Um, that's what I really struggled with um, when touring internationally. And it's not the same uh, connecting with people over FaceTime and, and stuff like that as it is face to face because you don't feel the energy. I, I'm, a, I'm a big energy feeler. <laughs> I bounce off people's energy. I'm quite a social person like that. Um, so to not have that from the people who know you best can be quite difficult at times. Um, and then not having your home comforts. As I say, like one of my main things, I'm I'm a foodie, I love food, I love my home comforts. There is a specific dish from my ho hometown of Middlesbrough called the chicken parmo. Um, and it reminds me of home and I love, I just love it. I'm obsessed with it. If you don't know it, look it up. It's basically a big heart attack in a box. It's very unhealthy, um, but it's a home comfort to me and I didn't have it for months. <laughs> and I actually think when I got home, I picked one up on the way home from the airport. That's how desperate times were. But I remember being in the Philippines and finding a Marks and Spencers in the mall and uh, I think I must have been missing home this day. And I went into Marks and Spencers and I found my favourite biscuits in, in the biscuit aisle of the food section. And I, I had a little cry in the middle of Marks and Spencers in Manila. <laughs> it's really, really embarrassing. But yeah, I had a cry over Marks and Spencers biscuits. That's happened. That's happened. Because um, it's just a comfort, isn't it? If you miss your home comforts. Um, so yeah. Homesickness is quite a difficult one and not having your home comfort and um, yeah, that that's difficult. Um, 
But again, being able to explore new cities, to counteract that and be around your friends when they're all feeling the same as you, to have kind of that solidarity with people in your cast. Um, you can go out for dinner and kind of talk it out. I think talking is really good. Talk it out, talk how you're feeling. Um, be open and honest with people about how you're feeling um, because bottling it up makes it 10 times worse. Um, so yeah, I think it's important to, that's why because, that's why, sorry, your castmates on tour tend to become more like your family. Uh, it always feels much more familiar to me um, because different people have their ups and downs on different days and um, it's about gauging that energy and just being there for people and then them being there for you when you're feeling particularly down and can't connect to your to the thing that would usually make you feel better if you get me so yeah that's why two are two are casts are often two are families um which is really really nice and always cheers you up journaling uh writing a travel journal or writing a journal in general um when things have felt quite quite overwhelming and your brain feels a bit too like messy um i found that writing that down kind of dissolves that and kind of dilutes it and uh then you get to write down amazing memories as well from your travels and you can reminisce over them for years to come um so yeah journaling in general is a really great tool for um when things feel a bit overwhelming and a bit much um and quite when you're feeling quite anxious i found which i've struggled with um a fair few times in the past when being on tour um so yeah i like to journal and write it down and uh yeah then reading them back is very very interesting my most recent experience of touring which was just before the pandemic was actually a production of evita where i played eva peron uh which was oh, such an incredible experience um but with that uh my cast were predominantly south african so i actually flew to cape town in south africa to rehearse for a month again won the lottery um because i got to experience south africa um, and Cape Town and how stunning the views are in Cape Town and the surroundings are. Um, the incredible food in Cape Town, uh, the, the incredible people. And then again, how how a South African company works and uh, how our work ethics kind of be put together like this and form one big family community. Um, it was amazing. It was just super special again it's not often that you get to to experience that um and it was a bit of an honor to lead that company um they were some of the kindest people i've ever met such a family unit um especially when we took the we took the production to china to tour which is where the tour um ran um we opened in shanghai and then toured around all the different cities in china which i'd never have thought to have done in a million years um so to be able to do that with work and to experience china again which is a completely different culture um was incredible and i got to climb the great wall of china um which was quite close to my birthday with my mum who flew out and with my uncle who flew from australia to meet us um so yeah just having that experience is amazing um and again, very, very different touring China to the UK. We still had to do the whole get out, get in thing, but the theatres in China were so different every venue. We had to like adapt sets sometimes. We had to um, cut the amount of lighting we'd have to rig because the theatre, specific theatres were too small for the lighting rigs and, um, and whatnot. So yeah, it was a very uh, unique experience in that way. And experiencing how Chinese audiences um, enjoy the theatre as well. Um, they were very, very receptive and um, yeah, they were very, very kind at stage door and would bring me gifts. And I felt a bit 
like I can't accept these please don't give me these um but they they were very very kind and um I don't know I felt very lucky and very like I don't deserve this <laughs> um so yeah it was it was very different doing a leading part as well um was a massive step up and a completely different pressure and having to navigate that pressure alongside being in a new country um with time differences and uh yeah different cultures it was it was an interesting one um and we flew home just before the pandemic uh the pandemic hadn't um become a thing at that time so fortunately um we got home in time and then a couple of months later um we were hit with the pandemic which hopefully we will be out of soon um but yeah that was my last uh experience of working and touring so it's a very very fond memory and uh i'm hoping i can do more of it in the future i love touring and i love seeing the world and exploring it's a great way to see the world and to explore and also to do the thing that i love the most which is to perform um in theatres so yeah so to round up this talky talk on talky talk i don't know why i've said that on uh touring as an actor um i thought i would tell you some uh valuable things that i've learned from touring the world um these are things that i've kind of taken into my everyday life or i try to take into everyday life i try to reminisce about um my touring times and how i felt within that moment and um how i can use that to move forward um so i've got my little list here um so the first thing that i uh really really have found valuable is having experienced different cultures and how different cultures thrive within the world um understanding that people have different opinions and um have different experiences within the world they have their own unique circumstances we all have our own unique walks of life um and to be able to understand and share those feelings and try and step into the shoes of other people um is has been valuable to me i think empathy is such an important thing so empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings um of of somebody else um i think that's been very important at the moment especially with the pandemic and, and trying to think how other people are feeling within that moment um, and being empathetic towards that um, and supportive of that. Um, I think traveling the world has really helped me to, to see that, to experience other cultures in that way. And um, as a result has only strengthened strengthen my empathy give me more empathy um which i'm very very grateful for the next thing on my list is i've learned how to pack a suitcase in the most efficient way um now up until the tour of china that i did i was a roller so i used to roll things and i do believe in rolling rolling your clothes um and squeezing them in tightly I think uh is the easiest way to to pack but a friend of mine introduced me to packing cubes which are like little compartments that you put in your suitcase you slot them in so you can put different things in each cube so you put your underwear in one put your socks in another uh roll up t-shirts and put them in another you can put shoes in um another and then you put them all in your suitcase so you know which is which compartment when you go to unpack and it just kind of brings everything together so you're not opening your suitcase and like rummaging through everything um packing cubes are a lifesaver um highly recommend you can get them anywhere on the internet so yeah i think i got mine on amazon which is great <laughs> The next valuable thing that I have learned, I kind of learned this at college way back in the day, but what has become even more apparent to me 
when traveling is if you're on time you're late so I always aim to be early for anything when I'm taking anything travel based into consideration so if I um, had to be at a venue in a different city for 2 p.m and I knew that it was going to take me two hours to get there from my current location, I'd maybe leave an extra hour before that so that I've got a good hour slot before I'm meant to be in the building ready to start a sound check. Um, I think then it's an, it not only kind of avoids any um, risk of getting stuck in traffic or road accidents or anything like that, but it just kind of, it's less stressful in general. If you're early, you get there and you breeze in, you can get your coffee and breeze in. Uh, but if you're running late, I, I feel like that's an added, added, added extra stress that you can do without if you leave a little bit earlier. Um, and that's especially important when you're in a foreign country and you all have to make the bus on time for a flight or something, you don't want to hold other people up. Um, so being early is better than being on time or late um yeah so punctuality <laughs> that old dime that old dime chestnut i'm thinking all the words today guys um that old chestnut of uh if you're on time you are late greatest piece of advice that chris hawking of art said ever give me the last thing that i kind of have learned to take into real life real life everything's real but uh that I try and take into my day-to-day -day life is just to continue to be curious about stuff um, and explore. Um, I'm an explorer at heart anyway. I think it's because I'm a Sagittarius. I love all the horoscope stuff. Um, but uh, I like to wander and I like to travel and see the world and make memories and appreciate each moment because I don't know when that will come along again. It's kind of like you only live once, isn't it? Like, um, so I just try and really experience the joy in each moment when it comes along. Um, because there may be times when things are particularly bleak, particularly bleak. Um, like at the moment uh, with the theatre industry, um, it's not been the easiest of times, but within that, if you try and search for the positives, um, whatever positives there may be, like the the opportunity to have time to explore things that you've maybe put off um, or not been able to do um, when life was normal. Um, I've been able to explore new things um, like voiceovery stuff and, and, and exploring stuff that I've always wanted to do, like photography and stuff like that, that I don't really have time to do usually. Um, so I like to try and find the joy in situations like that. And I, I believe that we never stop learning in life. So I always try and look for a lesson in things. I, I try and look to see what I can learn from new experiences and, um, opportunities and people that I meet. Um, I feel like we've always got something to learn from somebody. Um, so yeah, I like to find the joy and I like to try and find the lessons and the learning curves and um, I feel like I'm still learning today and I'm still growing today as an actor and as a person and the day that I stop learning is the day that life is a bit boring, I think. Um, I think we're constantly trying to learn so we can learn from each other and learn from any experience that's thrown our way i think if that didn't sound too cheesy <laughs> but um yeah that is it from me on the on the touring front um i hope this has been very useful i hope this hasn't just been me nattering away at you um but yeah i I'm very, very appreciative for the opportunities that I have been given in the past few years. Um, and I can't wait to be able to explore again. I'm really, really excited. So, yeah!
yes i hope you're all having a lovely week and i hope that you've enjoyed this curve classroom session um i think it's a fantastic idea and i think the guys at curve are absolutely brilliant for making this happen um keep supporting your local theaters um keep showing your appreciation for them um and uh we hope to see you back watching shows taking part in shows um very very soon and i hope that yeah you have a lovely day <laughs>